Welcome to Anaerobic Digestion Process Design segment. In this segment, we are going to learn about design parameters and design equations, co-digestion design considerations, and different process component considerations. Process design considerations. The following parameters play a significant role while designing an anaerobic digester. And they are waste characteristics and flow, process temperature, process pH and alkalinity, solid retention time, hydraulic retention time, the food to microorganism ratio, loading rate for digester, volatile solid destruction rate, estimated gas production rate and digester heating requirements. Some of the parameters we have already discussed earlier, but here we are going to discuss them all over again because all these parameters plays a very significant role while designing an digestion process. So let's start. Let's start with feed or waste characteristics and flow. So whenever we are going to design an anaerobic digestion process, we need to know what we are going to treat and how much of it we are going to treat. So we need to know information like current and predicted future flow and load. Also, you need to know average daily flow, peak flow, maximum monthly flow, etc. And also, all waste are not equally biodegradable. So, we need information like the solid and organic fraction of the waste. We need to know solid content percentage and total solids, volatile solids, chemical oxygen demand, etc. about the waste. Also, nutrient content of the waste. Nutrients like carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus are very important for the survival and growth of anaerobic process organism. So total nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium of the feed we have to know. Also about the dilution requirement. We know liquid or wet digestion process can only treat up to certain amount of feed solid concentration because pumpability and mixing concern exist. So does the feed need to be diluted? Uh, literature, literature suggests that about 6 to 17 percent is the optimum feed concentration uh, that anaerobic digestion can handle and if the feed solid concentration is higher than that, then that needs some dilution. Also waste temperature because feed like fog that tend to get solidified in the colder temperature. So the feed or storage tanks need to be heated to keep the feed in a, sol uh, in a liquid state. So that's why waste temperature is also important because we also have to know the incoming waste temperatures because we have to raise that to the process temperature. Say so after Knowing the feed characteristics, we have to decide the process temperature, like what would be our operating uh, temperature for the process. In practice, most of the anaerobic digestion system are designed to operate at mesophilic range, as we discussed, and that is 30 to 38 degrees centigrade. And some of them are designed for thermophilic temperature as well, that is uh, between 50 to 57 degrees centigrade. And also many modern anaerobic digestion plants have chosen thermophilic process for their certain advantages like process efficiency and enhanced gas production. The next parameter also we have already discussed that is alkalinity and pH and we know that for a well established digester the total alkalinity range should be between 2000 and 5000 milligram per liter and the volatile acid to alkalinity ratio should fall between 0 0.05 to 0 0.25 with 0 0.1 value indicating a good buffering capacity. And also the most mesmerians prefer a narrow pH range and the optimal one is reported to be 7 to 8. The optimum pH interval for mesophilic digestion is between 6.5 and 8 and the process is severely inhibited if the pH value falls out of this range. Then we came to solids and hydraulic retention time. We know that solid and hydraulic retention time are the average time solid and liquids are filled in the digestion process. So HRT can be calculated based on the equation like uh, HRT is equal to tank volume by flow and SRT can be calculated as tank volume into digester solid concentration divided by waste flow into solid waste solid concentration. 
So each of the anaerobic digestion reaction requires a minimum SRT to be completed. And if the design SRT is less than that minimum SRT, then the digestion process failed. That means if the rate of bacterial loss as effluent exceeds bacterial growth, the situation is called a washout and that SRT, that minimum SRT that is required to prevent washout is known as critical SRT. So while determining SRT, usually a safety factor is considered or added to the design SRT. In a, in a completely mixed reactor with no recycle, solid and hydraulic retention times are the same. And in practice, for high rate digestion, the values of SRT range between 10 to 20 days. And there are more SRT value at different temperatures are given at table 1327, the in Metcalf and AD 5th edition. Loading rate or loading factors. In general, it is the amount of feed in weight added per day per unit volume of digester. So its units are kg per meter cube per day or pound per feet cube per day. It is one of the most common method to size digester. The two most favored loading factors used in anaerobic digester size units are following. One of them is the mass of uh, volatile solids added per day per unit volume of digester capacity. It is the preferred one to size anaerobic digester. And the other one is the mass of volatile solids added per day per mass of volatile solids in the digester. So typical solid loading rates for sizing mesophilic hydrate anaerobic digestion ranges between 1.6 to 4.8 kg VSS per meter cube per day or 100 to 300 pound VSS per 10 to the power 3 feet cube per day. The upper limit of loading rate, that means how much load we can, the maximum amount of feed I can add to the digester is usually determined by toxic substance accumulation that is usually ammonia and also wash out of methane formers because if we add more we have to take out more and that may prevent methanogenic population to grow because we have to take out faster and as a result wash out may occur. So different volatile solid loading factor values at different solid concentration and hydraulic retention time can be found on table 1329 in Metcalf in 85th edition. Food to microorganism ratio. The ratio of waste mass per amount of microorganism mass available to consume that waste is the food to microorganism ratio. In general, FM ratio is equal to digester VS loading per digester VS concentration. Loading rate and FM ratio are directly related to each other as they are two very important factors in digester efficiency and performance. Theoretically, a lower ratio means higher percentage of waste will be converted into gas. Also, with a given biomass concentration inside the digester, the conversion efficiency can be increased by decreasing loading rate. That means, at a given temperature, bacteria can consume only a certain amount of food. But there are problems associated with the diluted loading rate as well. That means we should not give too much food to bacteria because they can only cons consume certain amount of that. But if you give them too little, there are problems associated with that as well. Like a starving condition, reduce VS destruction, reduce methane generation, and increased amount of digested to handle, and associated treatment and uh, hauling cost. So it is very important to optimize the digester VS loading and FM ratio for the given type of waste and selected digestion technology. Volatile solid destruction rate. Uh, that is the percent reduction in volatile solids and it is related to degree of stabilization. So for high rate complex mixed digester, volatile solid destruction rate can be found out based on the following equation. That is VD equal to 13.7 ln SRT for digestion plus 18.9, where VD is volatile solid destruction percentage and SRT is time of digestion, usually 15 to 20 days. 
and this uh, calculation is a rough calculation and usually overestimate the number. So digester volatile solid reduction can also be calculated using two other different methods. We are going to discuss them as well. So volatile solid reduction method, the first one is mass balance method. Based on this uh, method, the equation is RVSS equal to MVSS in feed minus uh, MVS in digester sludge minus MVS in supernatant into 100 divided by MVS in feed. Where RVSS is volatile solid destruction percentage, MVS in feed is mass flow rate of volatiles in digester feed, MVS in the digested sludge is mass flow rate of uh, volatile outs of digester and MVS in supernatant is mass flow rate of volatiles in digester decant stream. And for the second method, known as simplified pancake formula, they assume that for modern hurried digester, MVS in supernatant is equal to zero as there is no decant. So the equation turn out to be RVSS equal to WVS in feed minus WVS in digested sludge into 100 divided by WVS in feed minus WVS in digested sludge into WVS in feed. So here RVS is volatile solid destruction percentage. WVS in feed is weight fraction of untreated sludge volatile content per total dry solids. That is volatile solids amount in total solids and WVS in digested sludge equal to weight fraction of volatile per total dry solids out of digester. This formula assumes that there is no supernatant withdrawal and no great accumulation inside the digester. So if you want to understand this equation further, there is an example of volatile solid reduction in Metcalf in 85th edition and that is 13.6, example 13.6. Estimated gas production rate. The respiration and oxidation end product of anaerobic digestion is methane gas and carbon dioxide. The quantity of methane gas can be calculated as the following equation. So in this equation is uh, PCH4 is equal to the volume of methane produced at a standard condition. 0.35 is the theoretical conversion factor for amount of methane produced. And we also know that conversion factor at 35 degrees centigrade is 0.4. Q is the flow rate in meter cube per day. S0 is BCOD in influent and S is BCOD in effluent. And Px is the net mass of cell tissue produced per day. For a complete mixed hydrate digester without recycle, net mass of cell tissue produced per day, Px, can be calculated using the following equation that is px equal to y into q into s naught minus s and then the conversion divided by 1 plus p into srt here y is the yield q is the flow rate s0 is the bcd in influent s is bcd in effluent and b is the endogenous coefficient and srt of course is solid retention time so example 13.5 of Metcalf and Eddy utilize this equation to calculate digester volume, gas production and performance. So you can look into that to get a better idea how to utilize this equation. Digester heating requirements. While calculating digester heating requirement, the following need to be considered. That we need to raise the incoming feed temperature to the process temperature. We have to compensate the heat loss through the roof, walls and floors of the digester. And the heat loss that may occur in piping between the heat source and the digester tank also need to be considered. And while computing energy requiring to heat the incoming sludge, it is usually assumed that a specific heat of most sludge is same as that of water. The heat loss from digester top, walls and bottom can be calculated using the following equation that is Q equal to U A delta T where Q is heat loss, U is overall coefficient of heat transfer 
A is cross-sectional area through which heat loss is occurring and delta is temperature drop across the surface in question. So in Metcalf in 85th edition, example 13.7 shows how to calculate digester heating requirement. Uh, you can go through that example to get a better idea. And also some typical overall heat transfer coefficient are reported in table 13.35. Solid mass balance calculation. The amount of solid enter the process would be equal to the amount converted to gas and come out as digested. So calculating the solid mass balance will help to calculate digested treatment and handling requirements. Like the amount of polymer need to be added for dewatering and then digested storage requirement, piping sizing, etc. A good example of solid mass balance calculation for anaerobic digestion is shown on example 143E at Metcalf in AD 5th edition. And it will, it will help to understand how to calculate total amount of solids in and out of the process. Let's move to codigestion design considerations. We know that codigestion is a new trend. So let's discuss what are the parameters we need to focus or, or consider before designing a codigestion process. The first one is feedstock blend ratio. Although codigestion is simultaneous digestion of multiple feedstock, the most common is uh, switch sludge or manual mixed with uh, single or multiple high strength waste like fog or food waste. A variety of high strength waste are suitable for codigestion as long as their mixture or blending ratio are correctly optimized. The optimum blend ratio of this high strength waste is suggested in various literature varies from 5 to 30 percent of the total VS to the digester. That means the VS contribution from my high strength waste should not contribute more than 30 percent of the total feed VS to the digester. If it does, it may result in various process upset due to product toxicity in the later stage. Feedstock toxicity. The feedstocks of codigestion must not be toxic or create an environment where toxic gases are produced for process microorganisms. With the increased nutrients in the digester from codigestion feedstocks, there could also be an increase in toxic gases like ammonia or hydrogen sulfide, and they can inhibit the production of methane. Loading rate. A high organic loading rate, OLR, can cause metabolite inhibition ammonia or hydrogen sulfide, or fatty acid accumulation, which reduce the digester performance. Weller values of no higher than 0.10 pound Vs per CF per day, or 1.6 kg per meter cube per day, are typically recommended to avoid such inhibition, especially during the startup periods. Operating temperature. Based on the literature findings, the number of mesophilic digesters using codigestion substantially exceeds thermophilic digesters in full-scale operation. The main reason may be the plant economy as the additional gas production in thermophilic operation may not offer a reasonable payback. But thermophilic anaerobic digestion may provide a slightly higher methane content in digester gas than mesophilic anaerobic digestion when only food waste is fed. The necessary pH for anaerobic digestion ranges between 6.8 to 8.5 and varies at different stages of anaerobic digestion process. Lower pH condition inhibit biogas production because the methane bacteria cannot survive at acidic condition. And some core digestion feedstocks like food waste tend to decompose quickly and can decrease the pH of the digester. In such case, Addition of a buffer like sodium bicarbonate may be added to balance the pH. Nutrient balance. Anaerobic digestion process failure is sometimes linked to the imbalance of carbon and nitrogen ratio in feed mixture. To reduce ammonia inhibition or volatile fatty acid accumulation, same ratio of codigestion feed mix should be maintained. The ideal carbon to nitrogen ratio for anaerobic digestion is suggested approximately. 20 to 1 to 30 to 1. 
The addition of codization materials with higher carbon contents than the main feedstock, like manure, can improve the overall CN ratio and increase methane production. For example, the CN of the dairy and soil manures may be enhanced by adding food processing residues such as potato waste with a CN ratio of 20 to 1, or crop residues such as oat straw with a CN ratio of 48 to 1. At the end, I'm going to talk about 10 states standard. So the Great Lakes Upper Mississippi River Board, GLUMRB, had created a water supply committee in 1950. And current member states and provinces are the following, like Illinois, New York, and other provinces. So they have created, the wastewater committee has created a report that suggests a standard for various wastewater treatment works. And that includes anaerobic digestion as well. So the report is called Recommended Standards for Wastewater Facilities. And it can be get from the following link. And anaerobic digestion design recommendations are listed at chapter 80 under sludge processing, storage, and disposal. And that is in section 84. So I recommend you to look into that as well while considering or designing an anaerobic digestion process. And with this slide, I'm going to close my design segment and we'll move to the next one that is plant design consideration.